yeah, we've seen a, a lot of the synergy over the time of the group stages with the silencer and then combining that up with anyone who will have the extra silences as the game goes on. Because, of course, what's the... Is it the double effectiveness with the arcane curse? I'm trying to remember what the... It is, yeah. So the slow and the damage is doubled when yep. you're silenced. So silencer, of course, naturally, he'll be able to get some use out of it with the last word and his global silence and the storm spirit will with the orchid. Plus now the talents are a lot more leaning into that as well, buffing up the arcane curse by 15 damage per second. It's it's a lot of damage to have to deal with, especially if he's if it's in these uh, hectic team fights. Basically, the only one that doesn't need to worry about it a ton is that tide hunter. But it still looks like everyone has continued with the emphasis on these team fights. I mean, Elephant with their silencer, Storm as well can get to a stage where the Aghanims can be a big issue. And then, you know, for Vici Gaming, we've seen a lot of the position fours going for the, the Will O' Wisp on the Keeper of the Light or the Orchid, which is very much a potential. And you have this Tidehunter Ravage. China has just always put so much emphasis on making sure they secure team fights because of how how important it is to a draft and how important it is to a game it always feels like you know we're not at a stage where games are ending at 20 25 minutes or, or ridiculous timing like that it will get to a stage where your team fight can really Radiant bring you back team. into a game vg gaming's turn that's right grim they're actually going stroke. for a grim stroke instead okay i mean it's decent to be able to hold people in place and there's a, a fair few point target abilities already VG um, gaming's one of the few things that is going to actually enable the uh the tide hunter to be locked down underneath the silence you can't just shrug off uh with the kraken shell the um the phantoms Radiant embrace but kind of like what we're expecting wow. just immediate response coming through with the disruptor i do kind of like the fact that they picked a support because they you wouldn't want to go like night stalker first because obviously it just makes makes it more easy to counter perhaps in the next phase and they're actually leaving Yang's hero until very last. Okay, something a little different here. Wanting to secure their laning stage, I suppose. It's a pretty strong one. Grimstroke, Lifestealer, you've already got very good movement speed. You're against a strength hero, so that Feast is going to be doing a lot of damage. And, uh, I mean, Keeper of the Light, he's speedy, but if you can get on top of him, you can burst him down pretty quickly. Five seconds remaining. Vici, well, I should start this off by saying Magma put a lot of emphasis on playing the Shadow Fiend into the Storm Spirit. Now, they didn't have as much success with it in regards to being like a laning stage counter and as the game goes on, feeling you know, overall impactful against the matchup. But Vici, they've also won with the Shadow Fiend. Ori went 12, 4, and 11 versus Invictus Gaming. And he went for Treads, BKB, Silver's Edge, Satanic, and then into the Arcane Blink as well. So they have shown that you know, the, the Shadow Fiend is still, is still a hero that's in the arsenal and, and they can definitely take some victories with it. I mean, I like the, the sound of that build. I mean, especially once you get the Arcane Blink available, it means that if you're walking around on Division, even someone like a Storm Radiant Spirit, you're going to need to down. have some next level reaction speed to be able to get out of that or pop the Global Silence. Well... Who's got the 23rd? Okay, so Vici looking for their position one here. Um, you got a Disruptor 5, so can harass Ten relatively well, but not the hero that can eat a lot of damage in the lane. So this might force Five you to go into remaining. like a melee route. Um, still going to ban out the Morphling though, which does have a very good carry to carry matchup versus the Lifestealer. Hmm. I mean, I, I was about to say Spectre, but you're into a Grimstroke, right? So never really want that to be able to have the... Uh, I guess if you don't go Radiance, it's not terrible. But always Ten something to be concerned about is the, uh, the Dark Portrait, of course. Just being able to get in onto the Silencer Five would be a, a huge boon, though, because right now they just don't have a way to do it. Keeper of the Light, Tidehunter, Disruptor, Shadow Fiend, none of them are really able to infiltrate onto the backlines. They need a stunning carry, I think. So Sven... Or Monkey King really stand out um, in that regard. Monkey may be a little bit... At least you've got some control in Ravage, potential Ignis, uh, and the Kinetic Field. Um, Sven, however, we've spoken a little bit about the matchup versus Lifestealer. It can go back and Ten forth seconds. depending on the itemization. If it goes Hellbender, and there is that Spectre Band. So I did like at least the reason why you said, because the supports are very reliant on their positioning, and he could get to a stage with an Abyssal Blade where he can also catch the Storm Spirit. Radiant what do they go? Okay. Um, 
So they're saying you got to run into us, yeah. basically. And I don't blame them. Like, Shadow Fiend can really get to a stage where if he gets those items with Satanic, like, you're not easy to kill off, especially with the non heavy committal on elephant and we've seen how you know we spoke about in the last series position threes in china are goddamn crazy and, and they will tank up a lot of damage but yeah yeah yeah, it. yeah that's they i mean you caught it Oracle ages ago for a reason man <laughs> and i mean it was always going to be a danger right like when you pick this drought this ranger a hell of a pick it's a hell of a pick like it combos together with everything that you're actually spoiled for choice right now like who do you go on My you want to kill dy you want to kill pyw you want to kill poyoyo oh this is a very good pick it's a very very good pick my issue is is that the landing stage he should get harassed a decent amount they're actually going to put fy on the silencer as well so mm. um, maybe look to trade a little bit more frequently i mean i feel the like that's there, fine yeah. right grimstroke lifestealer is a great lane as well yeah yeah definitely they can put a lot more pressure on uh pyw is pretty mobile so it might be hard to to gap close there but at least the harassment on old 11 might be a bit too much early but i'm a huge fan of this night stalker i think that disruptor is a hero that really relies on vision and with dark ascension is going to heavily mitigate that you want heroes that can get active and rotate early to bully the shadow fiend in his jungle and the first nighttime yank should be able to do so uh coddle is also very position reliant my one big issue is that maybe with thunderstrike and drow to be able to harass with frost arrows then you might take a little bit of harassment in the lane and in fact a lot of harassment so i'm going to be keeping an eye on how his starting items look and how his overall regen looks but you called this night soccer very early on and all the way to the last pick that looked beautiful and even better when the drow was picked up absolutely i mean i feel like i feel like it was kind of predictable what vici were going to do for except for maybe that last pick you know maybe the spectre band kind of threw them through through a loop a little bit and forced to go into the drow ranger uh, but yeah i mean the light stalker night stalker was always on the board i do want to say before we get into things you know it's the the main event of the day thank you everyone for tuning in and uh we of course need to give a shout out to a, an icon of the southeast asian scene that aries and i have uh covered for quite a while as well as the chinese scene uh, in Kuya Dunu. He unfortunately passed away, it sounds like, from COVID complications uh, either today or yesterday. And uh, our thoughts are with him. So many iconic moments coming from him. Uh, he, of course, first and foremost, being the OG TNC series. Lacard, Maratad, Normalin, Normalin, and uh, everything else that goes along with that. So hopefully, Valve gives us something to remember him by in game. It's definitely, it feels like he. We'll live on forever, especially with the voice line and, and how he's been able to impact the scene and, and what a what an incredible person he was and will continue to be. <laughs> but with how we get to celebrate that is with the beautiful game the of Dota 2. I mean, a high caliber commentator and we get to talk about high caliber teams as well. Elephant Vici Gaming, the last series of the groups two ti caliber teams we get to see them battle it out with some you know some new heroes we haven't seen the drow as much supports starting to continue getting picked up at a more consistent rate in the silencer the keeper of the light the disruptor and we have been putting a lot of emphasis on the fact that vici gaming their support duo the pyw and dy show is quite often what it is whenever they're on these heavy heavy spell casting orientated supports and it's the same duo they got with their heroes why he's going to be going the uh, the Glaives of Wisdom, so a little bit more of the consistent harass style. I mean, if you go the good the uh, arcane curse, of course you can just wait. There's nothing really stopping you from uh, uh, being able to freely whack away with the uh, the Glaives of Wisdom. 600 range on that, and you compare that to the Disruptor, it's fairly even. But in terms of armor and just being able to trade in general, you're more likely to go into a few more stat items on FY here as he is looking to build into the urn as they get active super early on. I'm also intrigued to see how Somnus is able to play this Shadowfin matchup. Uh, it's always felt like it's not the the easiest of times uh, with how you can just... A Storm is a hero that does need to be on the Crete Wave and it can make it a lot easier for the Shadowfin to set up for those raises. You know, we've seen through the, the early stages of the lanes that Shadowfin can just bring a hero down from pretty much four to zero with like four raises if you can ever get to that stage. But 
How do you feel like this matchup, though, out of the laning phase will fare? As Somnus got a big level 3 advantage. Early Vortex. I think this might be a kill with another Overload. Woo. Okay, Fairy Fire. See you, Ori. He's getting there, and does, what's, his, what's his courier doing? Is it only just coming out with the bottle now? Is this Ori you speaking about? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit slow. Somnus had already been able to pick his up. I wonder what the control over the... Uh, the water rinse is going to be like still should just be a one for one i wonder if it was because there's a sentry on the car as well so maybe there was a little bit of uh, time slippage there from trying to get the supports to give him that sentry maybe it cost him a, a couple of seconds looks like he should still get the the water room down bottom and as we take a look also at the bottom lane here urus and super battling up against old 11 and pyw so far no real shenanigans it looks like both the both the cores are getting their farm the one thing that is different though from the way that dy is like to play his disruptor a fair amount is that this game there's not really an amazing target to have for the uh oh agadim shard as he's speaking of dy he's getting gone on a little bit here if they're able to snowball this into some early kills he has the glaives of wisdom leveled up they're gonna get the void off just Ooh. have the mana just getting away even but yeah like who do you use the agadim shard uh thunder strike on uh, I no one really. The Maybe the Shadow Fiend, but it's just it, it's not quite the level of like you know the the Razor, the Dragon Knight, you know these sorts of real melee heroes that we've been seeing that want to get right into the center of these team fights. I think Shadow Fiend doesn't mind it once he gets items. Like you can be very very survivable with like Sanjin Yasha, Satanic, and maybe like a Scardi or something Stupendous. like that, or just like an extra stat item just so he doesn't get bursted. And the attack speed and, sure. and, and attack speed, sorry, uh, movement speed and attack speed, I should say, does feel very, very nice on, on that hero, I think, as the game goes on. And even maybe not, like, the Drow Ranger just helping with his positioning just to maybe reset in a fight could be nice as well, because that is a hero that is very dependent on his position. And you're definitely going to need that against the Night Stalker, that's for oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Which... A little bit of extra vision is always nice, but, I mean, for me, the big... The big thing that makes the uh, the Disruptor Shard great is not just that, right? Like, you, you of course, get the extra movement speed. You get the extra attack speed. And, uh, you know, the little buff, the increased radius is fine. But the fact that it can hit on you and the enemy team still, and since they buffed up Thunderstrike to have that slow 100% movement speed and attack speed slow for 0.4 seconds multiple times is huge. And uh, it just feels like you get so much more value on that hitting multiple targets when it's on a melee hero. Like, can you imagine if it was on uh, the Life Stealer, for example? Incredibly effective. Yeah. Top lane, Yang. Starting to fall pretty low here, Puyo. Winning the man fight at the moment. In fact, DY even able to pick up first blood. But FY looking for a beautiful trade here, trying to find his first plus two intel of the game. But unfortunately, the Arcane Curse will expire and it forces him to overstep on his position and helps DY secure a double. And this is the downside of having, uh, I mean, a relatively weak first five minutes without the Night Stalker. It's going to become easier now as Boyoyo looks to quickly shove the wave out so that he not has, uh, doesn't have to contest into Yang. But finally, DY doing kind of what I was hoping for when we previously saw him going for the two points into the Thunder Strike, just so that he can put a bit more harass out. I think without that, they probably wouldn't have got that double kill. So this is level cl very close to level six. They're going to jump now instantly. No, he didn't get it off. They, they ate the creep. So he didn't hit that level six and now it's picked up and but Ori's got his own. Oh no. One of the supports got close enough to soak a little bit Soaking. of that. Yeah, yeah. That could have been that could have been a kill. Who knows? I mean maybe they could have turned it with the Requiem and, and given him some space, but hmm. And That's meanwhile though. Kill gone begging. Look at the stacks, man. It's it's the classic. Vici Gaming, Illusion. always on top of their stacks. It's so easy to do with the Keeper of the Light. And, you know, we saw the emphasis earlier when there was a Bristleback that was able to take the stacks and just be this huge raid boss early on and, and be almost unkillable. And, well, they could do that to the, the Tidehunter if they wanted to. Yeah, potentially. He's still so tanky, though, right? Like, you're a sure It's a nice lane. You don't... You're not going to get heavily bullied out just because of the uh, the feast of course very survivable in the laning Radiant stage but you're not going to get kills onto old 11. 
He's already finished up the Hood of Defiance as well. A lot of this early damage does come from magic sources. Nice. Top lane. Looking to set up. This is where my eyes are on Elephant and what they can do out of this first night time. Because I think you... Like, Yang has had a... Even though he had that early death, he's had a pretty solid laning Poyoyo. stage. And in fact, Poyoyo... Oh, this is not a place you want to be beckoning around as Yang get involved with the duo supports. Even Ori looking to show up and try and find a rebuttal on the silencer which they will do so successfully but the only issue is now is that ori is taking the full brunt of the force as yank just looking to continue to zone them further and further back to the t2 tower super was so close from being able to connect onto that stroke of fate it's only level one don't know if it would have actually secured the kill as they're going to continue backing off with that freshly placed observer ward might even be able to get a d ward here if they see super walking around with one and then walking back without it but yeah, this is They're this is now. Where are you? He's at least got the coddle behind him. They're gonna take some stacks away in the jungle. Somna scouts out a double at the hard. I don't think Dio. They probably saw Grimstroke's positioning running through the jungle, but they'll be too late to get there. As long as they keep this big ancient stack, I think that's a, a quad stack at the moment. So that is that's a huge objective. You cannot give that up for free. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. I'd nearly be giving that over to Old Eleven. Like, he's already had a fantastic start to the game, but if you just make this really beefy target that's impossible to get through, then you're feeling pretty good of it as another death for FY. That's three deaths so far on the silencer. A little bit unexpected, if I'm being honest. It's just positioning slightly out of place here. But he will still have impact as the game goes on, of course, with the global silence. And I'm actually intrigued. Oh, my God. Somnus was just, he was TPing out with that new freshly placed Observer Ward. They just got a glimpse of him from DY, but he just, he doesn't have enough points in the glimpse Dyer's itself to be able to get the TP attack. back. That would have been a kill. Now, can you refresh my memory attack. on what the build has Dyer's been that we've been seeing from position five silences? And do you feel like FY will continue with that? Or he, what do you think he'll switch it up to? It depends on the game, right? Because there's so many things having more int than your opponent is so impactful so something like a four staff is of course going to be very good we've seen a uh, veil of discord if you need to just for that little bit of extra regen and lane which i thought he might have gone for considering he went that glaives of wisdom level one he wants to just constantly be able to spam that, that out but the owner shadows does a similar like sort of thing so i think probably just boots into a four staff wouldn't be the worst um, although it is going to be tough against a, a disruptor, Dyer's I suppose the poor stuff fallen. might not end up saving you anyway. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Looks like <laughs> five heroes it's of each. It's a five-man effect. Uh, let's. Why not all get some some gold, some experience as well? They might. Do they have a smoke to lead in after, or is it a bit out of mana? Looks like they just want to secure it. So yeah. I don't hate it at all because I, I like how they've been posturing away from top. Fully recognizing that this is a lane that you don't want to go to now with the Night Stalker. So you're just happy with trading across the map and it's really showing it in the net worth regard. And they have complete understanding of all of the movements coming through from uh, Elephant as well with that Observer Ward vision inside their own jungle. They know that if everyone's visible there, there's no way that they're going to get punished on the bottom side. Although but they're making a, a little bit of a movement down towards this bot side now. Ravage available and Poyoyo standing behind. He's got the Dragon Lance coming out to himself as well. So going to be a little bit more survival in these team fights. Is it going to be enough though to be able to contest into this Night Stalker who I believe has uh, not finished up the Echo Saber, but at least the Oblivion Staff component. Just, they probably need to start with Static Storm on DY, but you see how Eurus is posturing to the to the bottom side, so it makes it that much more difficult. They don't have Radiant a way to cancel a BKB TP out. Yeah, he can just Rage TP anytime he wants. He's... I don't think they're going to pop Ravage for him. Oh my god, he wants to maybe the now they will. Okay, oh, global oh great global. My Excellent. god, look how greedy that is, though. <laughs> is under Wait, uh -oh. oh, he's still in trouble. He can still Rage TP. That's global now wasted though. Like, I understand the, the thought process behind it, but I still feel like they get the tower with all five heroes and without the catapult. 
Maybe. And the question is, like, what did they do on Elephant FYA in the is probably going to die mid. And, yeah, well, in fact, he 100% is going to die middle lane. So, Old Eleven continues to be the beast on the on the Titan on the top of the net worth. And there seems to be a reason why that Vici Gaming are picking his hero in the tide specifically in the first phase. Finally able to pick up those boots of speed on FY. It's nearly 12 minutes into the game. I mean, it's that, but also it's such a Yang comfort hero that you want to be able to take that away from that element. Very true. Looks like they're just starting to play a little bit faster than Elephant at the moment. I mean, Radiant, if you commit in with, you know, Rage then on cooldown or with no meta on the Storm Spirit as Yang's in trouble. But it's got the mass TP rotation, so I've always able to get out of range of the Static Storm. Now, can they continue to punish here? It's the long zip in from Somnus instantly, looking to try and target down the Drow Ranger. He doesn't have enough damage in the tank, especially with the charge of the Requiem, finding that last fear line. And then Poyoyo can follow up with the Gus Sans, but still, Ori's going to be cautious. He's just going to go for a heads out TP, recognizing that, hey, there's no way they can cancel this. I'm out scot free. And they're just they're getting away with absolutely everything that they're trying here. It's kind of ridiculous. And uh, I thought they nearly might have grieved Eurus. He's in a little bit of trouble. Pub faking the Ravage. He needs to keep running. They might even look to pop the Ravage here. Do it. Do it. Ah. So that glimpse, uh, even though I, I could see the reasoning for it, you know, pulling him back into the um, the closer range to allow the Drow to pick him off and the, uh, the Illuminate ended up killing the Night Stalker anyway. It actually pulled him out of the multi-shot arrows, so uh, could have could have potentially griefed away a kill. Luckily enough, Avicii Gaming wasn't to be the case, but yeah, this lineup's working out pretty well for them. Now, what do we feel like the avenue is for victory for the side of Radiant? Because at the moment, they're 3,000 gold behind, and I'm very worried at how they can take these teamfight skirmishes, considering all of the mass big ultimates that Vici have. So are there any big ways that you can see them to, to bring themselves into this game and then potentially take it? I mean, they need BKBs. That's it. You know, um, we've got no rushes yet on them. Of course, you've got the Night Stalker, but we've seen that you are a little bit vulnerable still, and it's just going to be responded to by the uh, the Vici BKBs going a really early one, especially on that Shadow Fiend. It's going to be tough. Pretty much mitigates the of course, if you use BKB after the global sounds, the Night Stalker jumping on top of you, the Storm Spirit as well, you should have plenty of time to get the Radiant recognition. Uh, well, speaking about the Storm, it's going to be in a very tricky scenario, but once again, the global sounds used just defensively. And he's actually regened up, so they've got the reinforcements coming over. Elephant might look to take the fight. It's a bit of a bait here by Super. See if they can punish as Eurus is going in, but he doesn't have the storm just yet until now. A long zip in, trying to target down Ori on the back line. Poyo not able to give him enough space, but Somnus is burnt completely all of his men are. So with the Ravage, they'll target down Eurus, and now they can try and find Somnus. See what the Night Stalker can do. Straight on top of Poyo with the help of Poyo. FI as well. But the issue is, is Gus pushed back. He's playing around with the free mobility at the moment of the Dark Ascension. Even Somnus looking to get involved as well with the Soul Ring. They need one more little instance of damage and the Void is enough. And now Yang's even going to go back in. Find this secondary kill, getting rid of PYW. You said it was all on Yang and he shows up huge there in that team fight. And that's exactly what a Night Stalker can do against this lineup. You know, if you don't have BKBs, you can't take the fight. They were able to eventually get the pick off onto Radiant's the Shadow Fiend, which means that, <clears throat> excuse me, the extended damage isn't there. It's all around these ultimates. And, well, if a Drow Ranger just has someone that's able to stand on top of her, Marksmanship does, like, nothing, you know? <laughs> it just gets cancelled out entirely. Ooh. And suddenly, a whole huge portion of your damage is removed from the pool. Chrysalis as a second item on Drow. Very interesting from Poyoyu. Um you feel like they're lacking damage which is the reason why he's gone for this itemization i mean potentially but i felt like they were in <clears throat> excuse me a pretty good position when they were looking to be the ones getting aggressive you know constantly pushing at towers uh, you know if you're running at people you're very happy as someone like a disruptor or a keeper of a light because you can just keep the enemy team on the back foot i feel like so going something like a uh, a bkb would just allow that a little bit more because you can't crit towers, and so that feels to me like what the Drow Ranger should be wanting to do right now is just hit away at towers, take away a lot of this map control that 
elephant are just going to slowly creep up more and more in havoc. I'm a bit worried at how the the net worth is looking as well for PYW compared to the Storm Spirit. Looks like another game where we've got an incredibly fat position for is building his Lotus Orb after the trend of the triple null and he's only 900 gold behind Somnus who hasn't had the greatest game at the moment. And Lotus Orb, I guess just another way to get rid of the silence. Yeah, that's all I can think of. Ghost Scepter, I feel like is going to be a key item once the game continues on. As I've caught out Ori, but he's got a DD BKB. I don't know if this is a target you want to reveal your cards to, and uh, it's showing at the moment. No, in fact, so, either. As Eurus gets blown apart, now they can drop the double Ravage as well to lock in Yang. That might be Roshan, and well, they're leading towards the area with two points in Gush, and with the DD, this should be with ease. Yeah, absolutely with the DD. Presence of the Dark Lord as well, reducing Roche's armor by a little bit further, so you're more than happy to be able to quickly take this one down, and you don't have any ways to turn it around. Dark Ascension used, Global Silence used, here. Storm Spirit, uh, as much as maybe loves to go for the YOLO God plays, he's uh, just not capable of doing it this time. He realizes how important it is for him to pick up his own BKB. Another thing we haven't even brought up is the, the marksmanship with the dual-ranged Aji carry in, in the Shadow Fiend. So he's going to get a, mm -hmm. a lot out of this ultimate here from, from the Drow Ranger, which is, you know, we, we haven't seen... The Drow was a, a specialty hero that we really don't see as often. You know, there was a stage Somnus. It just wants the room, but if D-White drops take that. Static Storm, which is unfortunately is on cooldown. Um, but yeah, we, we haven't really seen the Drow for a while, but it's always been super nice to pair him with another Wing Condition-esque Aji hero. Yeah, for sure. So much damage potential coming through. Finally, getting a, an item that's going to buff up his damage a little bit further, picking up the Brigand's Blade now. Just holding on to that possessed mask for what felt like ages. Now, what are we wanting Vici Gaming to do with this ages? Do you feel like this is for them just to farm up their next items, then look to go? Do you feel like they can do a lot of damage to the towers with it? I feel like they can do a lot of damage to the towers, <clears throat> but I feel like that has to come after the BKBs are online, particularly for the Drow Ranger PYW, he's nearly finished up the Lotus Orb as well. So those are going to be the key components there. You know, if the Global Silence is used, um, I'm sure the Tide Hunter is not going to be the target. So you don't want to attack him, allow that Kraken Shell to break the Silence. Just pop that onto him. Suddenly you've got the Ravage, you've got the turnaround potential that you might not be expecting on Elephant because they've still yet to pick up any BKBs, I believe. Uh, nice Talker almost having his Storm Spirit still about one and a half components away. You know, and you never really want to be using the rage like that. What's the right word? Mm, fleetingly, I guess. Sure. You know, just popping it, just popping it for the sake of it. So are we worried at the moment that V, sorry, Elephant might not be able to execute with kind of their pickoff lineup, and it's going to get to the stage where you're forced to five v five versus Vici. Depends on the positioning, right? Because we know that PYW wants to be a fair way away from the start of the uh, the team fight. Of course, Night Stalker is a hindrance to that, but I feel like Tidehunter needs to be kind of positioned towards the front, but not too far away from the Night Stalker, so you still do have that turnaround potential. It's all eyes on how the support items are, are gonna come through here for DY and PYWs. O11's oh, in a great spot to pop the smoke, and well, in fact, he they might not even smoke, they just might try and Kill him off here. Beautiful. Placement in the four staff gives him a little bit of distance away as Elephant are lacking the control three. at the moment. And they have to be cautious of how far they overstep the mark. And maybe you can glimpse drag back. They don't have the detection just yet. So this isn't nearby as well. So it looks like they'll just give up the silencer. Who is working on the agonims here from FY. But hey, this all started on trying to kill off the tide. And we'll see how difficult that is. I don't mind the, uh, the Agnes on the silence. Dude, chill out, brother. It's, it's nice in that, you know, obviously having an AoE last Dyer's word is great. Uh, it means that, attack. you know, you're going to have Radiant's that secondary way to get the, the multiple hero Who's silences stopped? off, even if the Lotus Orb is used prior to the BKBs coming out as well. So that's going to be really effective. 
Uh, I really like the way the Beachy have played it Dyer's now, though. Um, Koyoyo is still a little short on the uh, the BKB, but you know, just rallying around, using this Aegis to its fullest potential. Ori being the one standing on the front lines, and they just waited for their key item timings. The next time that they want to do it, of course, is around this Drow Ranger with the BKB. They'll still have. Uh, they got, what, two minutes left on the Aegis? I think they've got enough time to finish that up and then look to push down one of these other Tier 2 towers. Notably mid. Mid's Dyer's the one that they want. You don't want to refresh the glyph for no reason by going top. Radina pretty close to some of their items. With the BKB on the Night Stalker. Somnus is a bit away from BKB, but the Deso is now completed what? from Eurus. What do we got? They went for the uh, the Ag Shard anyway on DY. They clearly value it quite highly, even though Shadow Fiend is that ranged hero, not quite as able to get up into the enemy's face. But I mean, I suppose he's got a Shadow Blade and a BKB, so he's more than happy to be. Yeah, it's still really nice on. Even if he doesn't get that added bonus of hitting the enemy team, like what it provides you Radiant's is ridiculous. Top tower is under attack. All right, here we go. Poyoyo BKB available. And uh, Vici, nowhere close to be able to... Sorry, Elephant, nowhere close to be able to contest Radiant's this top, top tower. tower has fallen. He's just continuing to farm, though. He's realizing that... Oh, I mean, is he going to be able Radiant's to join them quickly enough? I don't know. Elephant are coming. Are I... They haven't shown in a while, though. That's why he's just standing next to their tier 2 tower in the mid lane, wanting to make sure that he's not getting ganked. Somnus, I don't think, is going to be capable of doing it on his own, even though he's got his BKB freshly delivered. Maybe with a DD he could do it, but well, not since the uh, the BKB on the Drow, I suppose. We're going to sweep and see if they can catch any stragglers down bot. They recognized there was a couple of TPs to defend the T2 tower. And if there was anyone else that didn't TP, they're going to be playing around the bottom side. But instead, continuing to hold their side on the triangle as Puyoyu can now finally look to connect. Radiant's they're a bit split on Elephant. Nord 11 going to catch them on the retreat here. The blink reel straight on top finds a ravage on three but the damage isn't there for the fall but the moment the global silence of bkb has been wasted see if Medium elephant Lotus can look well. to jump you've got to be careful running into the choke point speechy gaming this could be a powerful position for them to hold their ground but luckily enough with the dark ascension it's giving him a decent amount of information but the only issue is that fake grenade i don't know whose it was but it got the kill uh drought no I, I swear i heard a fake so uh, did I. Dude, what? I, Shadow Fiend I, was holding one, I'm pretty sure. I, and I know PYW... Uh, dude, I, okay. I'm not... I don't know Radiant's what happened. Anyway, PYW got the attack. kill. But again, a lot was forced out there for that. Radiant's middle tower I gotta say, though, it, it, it is a little lazy having the techies attack animation as it's, uh, <laughs> as it's sound. They... Hopefully, in due time, we could see a change. In its own cool sound animation. Well, no Aegis, but no two tier, attack. no tier two towers Zero. remaining for Elephant. Each year looking to take both Down of these. Feeling very attack. comfortable. Radiant's Silver Edge as well, now gone. going to be complete for Shadow Fiend. Be very happy with that. Are they? Can even look to man fight into the, uh, the life stealer. High ground time. It's day, and they feel the power. They know the Night Stalker is not any strongest suit just yet. They also know the Global Silence is on cooldown as well, and Eurus is not TPing back. He'll finally he do so. So I'm just going to start the fight, but the instantly silence up from Poyoyo. They'll drop the BKB, which gives him some space here, but it looks like they're trying to target down Ori. He's got his own BKB as well. So just I the team with the ultimates on cooldown. They're kind of just trading BKBs and resetting their positions. Hmm. This is the downside of going an item like the Agadim Scepter on FY. Like, sure, it's going to be good once he picks it up, but it just feels like his impact for the meantime is somewhat lackluster. You know, you've had all of these heroes that have needed to take what farm remains on the map, and now, with all of the Tier 2s gone, it feels like there's not really any safe place to go. Still inside Somnus, though, is the Lifesteal. They're going to look to try and get a pick off. Old Eleven is not the one, though. He is plenty tanky. Oh, that scan might just Dyer's connect. Scan. Does it clip? Oh my god. It might at the tail end. It just connected. They see the Dark Ascension as well. Ori's on the front line. Yank doesn't have any detection. Look at that movement speed. Oh my god. And now Old Eleven? They know they can't kill the Tide. And this might be too deep. Dude, look at oh, what Old Eleven? <laughs> Dude, look at this man. 
but he's oh, away from the back, back line. line. So they'll jump, kill off the disruptor, but it means the life sealer is in a bizarre position to be able to get back to safety. An overzealous jump costs life sealer his life. So now we're four on four, but that's a key component. As Jesus, look at the damage, the crits from the Silver Edge. They're just going to drop the Ravage as well. No messing around from old 11. Just put the two supports in the grave. Yeah, uh, I mean, they were somehow able to get old 11 down to half HP without the Storm Spirit or the Lifesteal, which I was a little surprised about. It's a heavy price to pay just to be able to pick off this Disruptor. You just need to go all in on that if that's the case, right? Like, it was a Storm Spirit that went in, the Dark Ascension was popped. You gotta fully commit. Like, he has BKB. Is this a, is this a time where Lifestealer needs to go BKB? It kind of feels like it. Not an item you, you want to pick up this early on, but... He's gone to Sand instead. I'm not sure how effective that's going to be, though. And... Unfortunately, Roshan is... It's up in two minutes, so... Vici would have loved to have that... At the moment. I, I really do not see what Elephant can do for these team fights. Like, I don't see how you kill the Tide. Jumping the supports is nice and all, but Radiant when you slip scared. from your vulnerable support yourself, then it's just going to be a trade on trade. Looking to go for another smoke, realizing that, okay, it's night time. We might be able to catch them farming in the jungle right at the 27 minute mark. Somnus just pushing out that midway first. Trying to get some more value. Actually, they go without Somnus underneath the cover of the smoke. Hey, what do you know? The Coddle is higher farm than the Lifestealer. How crazy is that? Oh. Another position four getting picked up in the Coddle that they don't ban, and all of a sudden he's got Lotus Orb Aghanims. Like, I just do not understand why we're still seeing it. Just ban it. I, just ban it. I legitimately... It's really just ban it. Dude, we have seen so many games, like, more than on my one hand I can count, of the games we've seen where he has high net worth and at least one call, we could even get to a stage where it's two. Like that's know, super. You got two hands for, you know. You can you can count with them, and then if you run out of that, you go to toes. I don't have toes. Sorry, this isn't a this isn't a toe shaming stream. <laughs> okay, what the? Oh, where it's uh it's a game shaming stream though. Unfortunately, it's not looking not looking good. But elephant, see how they can they've come back from crazier performances. See if they can do the same here in this game one. Oh no, super. My life. Okay, Melt. Instant BKP though on the Shadow Fiend. They're gonna need to get away on Somnus. Zip zap. Hmm. They can't make a turnaround here. They can't. They're thinking about it, but you can't do it. They're trying to find DY on the back lines here with Yang. Yang? He doesn't have any extra damage right now. Look at how old 11 is just pushing back. Wow. <laughs> Dude, this here is crazy. And they found Dude, him. I'd have and they'll BKB. get the favorite on him. Yeah. So... I mean, you just can't go unless this Storm Spirit has BKB. And he had to use it defensively because of how Vici Gaming are positioning themselves. There was a little bit of luck involved, of course, with the double damage that... on Ori. But that's just going to mean a second Roche for them. It really feels like Elephant have to split up the map. Like, you you are... We're seeing the struggles that they can't 5v5. And it's been like that for 10 plus minutes now. I do not have the greatest pickoff lineup. Disrupt is pretty decent. Shadowfiend doesn't have any lockdown. You don't want to drop a solo Ravage. And you can always BKB out if the Drow finds you. And, and that's very rare as well. So I, I really think Elephant have to just split up the map. Force Vici to make a mistake where they don't have... A full, you know, five numbers for a potential team fight that breaks out, and just use the mobility that Elephant have. Like Night Stalker is really mobile at night time. Storm Spirit is as well. You just cannot go five v five. But the issue is now it's too late. Like now you've given over the second Roche, and now you can just walk up high ground. Uh, yeah, they don't even need to glyph that uh, that rare Dire Creep Wave, I believe, because Old Eleven he just got given over the shard. So he is capable of just reducing that damage to next to nothing. Yang in on the back lines, just trying to catch someone out. That just one creep, so that's all he wanted. Now it's time. Radiance middle Old Again, same situation as last time. You can't fight for another 30 Radiance seconds, and in that time, you're going to lose the second lane of Rax. You're just going to be careful. The rage is on cooldown, so on this big jump and insulin the white hole prevents any extra four. 
to help Somnus with all this damage output that he's doing currently and just another hard reset. <laughs> just another hard reset. Yes. Uh, wow. They're not even going to make an attempt. They've had enough. They feel like this game, no way back into it as Vici Gaming. What a methodical performance from them. It was methodical, but I felt like it was kind of, maybe not so much the Shadow Fiend, but that Disruptor was very, very telegraphed. Like you knew it was coming. You knew that you needed to have a response to be able to play into this. And I don't feel like what they drafted was was going to be able to bully him enough in the laning stage, right? You need to get someone that's going to be getting really aggressive onto him or that's not going to have a losing lane. And it just didn't happen. Like, how many times do we need to see Keeper of the Light Disruptor on <laughs> PYW and DY until teams realize that this is what's going to happen or at the very least get rid of the Coddle? Dude, Old Eleven played that game exceptional. Like, with how he was posturing on the map and... It, it was actually so goddamn beautiful. Even though, like, maybe Storm can get on the drow... Old Eleven was stopping FY, Super, and, and kind of Eurus as well from being able to follow up. They didn't really start infesting Bomb or attempting that till really later in the game. And I, pff, I cannot say enough praises for Old Eleven in that game. And I can't even just give props to one person. Like how Vici Gaming were able to play that game. There were very, very few mistakes in, in this game, in this game one. Can you do me a bit of a favor? Uh, go to the scoreboard screen and then go to graphs. And then untick everyone on the Vici Gaming side except for PYW. Why are we doing play net worth? Player net worth, yeah. And then uh, let's have a look at how the game ended with our position four Keeper of the Light. Yeah, dope. That's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. You're that's a big that's fan, that's, aren't you? that's that's a cool hero. Yeah, 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 that's really cool. The fact that you can have uh, your position four that much farm. I, I they uh, teams are still not considering this to be a valuable ban. Um, I really want to see if that changes up in the next game because they are doing way too much. It's not even the amount of stacks that you can provide, like how they played that lane. It's beautiful. VG Gaming, they have this self-sustaining position three where like Live Silla and Grimstroke aren't going to kill the Tide once they secured his first couple of waves. So PYW just goes back and makes stacks. He makes... he he's Eight. Uh, yeah, Eight ridiculous stacks. amount. He... he makes at least a triple or quad at the hard camp. So you enable your Shadow Fiend, who had a very good lane already. And then what do you know? You make a massive ancient stack where the whole team gets it all as well. This was split between five heroes. So like, like this is just Liquid-esque. We've literally seen Liquid do this for such a long time when they're playing the Keep of the Light. And it is no different now when Vici pick it up. Like, I really, really want to see the difference now from Elephant with their first phase bans and their first phase picks. Like, maybe if they have first pick, they go for the Coddle instead. I don't know, but Vici Gaming... I feel like, uh, I feel like if you're against a Nyx Assassin, it makes the game difficult. If you're against a PYW Coddle, it makes the game impossible. So <laughs> play the odds, basically. And, uh, you know back yourself in you either need to pick it yourself or you need to get rid of it something might slip through but you know at the end of the day that's yep. the bullet that you need to bite it's... while there's still only two first phase bands the argument it is you know what's the poison what do you want to go out to maybe you have a strategy that you believe the coddle is not enough maybe you have a strategy that you think you can beat the night stalker or sorry the nyx assassin i should say in the end elephant they're a ti caliber team They'll, they will definitely switch it up for game two because they don't want to drop their last series in 2-0 fashion. They want to force this to a game three. They want to hit back home and continue into the playoffs with some momentum. They really want that upper bracket round to start as well. And to do that, they need to come back and to set themselves up with a beautiful draft that only time will tell. And when, we'll find, and when we come back from our break, we'll have all the answers.